Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, before I begin, I'd like to thank you because a couple of nights ago I reached my first YouTube milestone. Um, I reached a thousand subscribers. I am beyond grateful to you. It's because of you that I reached that milestone. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here, for keeping me company as I share my love of art and art materials, for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, for just being here. It means so much to me. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <sighs> Today, um, I... It, it, this is a little bit of an impromptu um, video because I was expecting some art materials to arrive from my Black Friday purchases. But unfortunately, due to the fact that I live on an island, and not only that, I live on the mountains <laughs> on an island, things tend to get quite um, delayed arriving. So today... I was going to swatch something else, but because it hasn't arrived, I'm going to do this video, which is going to be about two things. Uh, this could be the first bit is going to be about these um, super granulation Horridum Schminke uh, watercolors that a good friend of mine purchased for me um, this year and which I haven't used a lot but I'd like to explore them with you um, and talk about them a little with you um, today and the other bit is about this pen that I purchased now I purchased a pack of these um, they're called Sarasa nanos I think no yeah they are called Sarasa nanos for some reason I have the wrong pen here um, because I got the 0 0.5 and I got 0 0.3 the one that I'm gonna talk about today is the 0 0.3 I'll just have to pop over and get it from my other desk um, and I'm gonna talk about them a little because I'm as you know I'm looking for pens for drawing so I tested this out a little bit in my sketchbook, so I'll talk about that just for a little while further into the video. Okay, so for the first part of the video, I have here my little box of super granulation um, Horridum aquarelles. I'm going to open it. As you can see, I haven't used them much. The reason I haven't used them is not because I didn't like them when I tried them. It's because, um, as I've said in a previous video, I usually work on hot press paper. And I think that these need to be on at least cold press paper to show their true beauty. I might be wrong and... Um, it's just what I, I imagine is the case because they granulate. So I'm going to start swatching them for you on my little swatching palette, uh, palette, swatching card that I did last night whilst I was after work. Um, and the first one I will be swatching is the Forest Olive. I believe I have here. Where should I put these? Now I'm going to move. This is my um my chamomile tea. I'm going to move it because I don't know about you, but when I paint, I tend to dip my <laughs> my watercolor brush into my tea. I'll just move it out of the way so I'm not tempted to do so. Okay, so the first one I have. Here is the forest olive. I'm going to open it. Put some there. Close it up. 
put it to one side and just add water. giving it a good mix before I apply it. I'm using my Cirrus Round Kalinsky Sable Brush by Windsor & Newton for a change. I'm just going to start applying the colour, mass tone and lighten as I go. It's true to its name, it's a an olive olivey green. It's a very natural olivey green. I am intrigued to see this on cold pressed, especially this Bockingford, which has a really nice um, texture to it. And add a little bit more water, just bring that out. Just leave it there. And I'm going to let them dry before I um, comment on them because I think that granulation, granulating colours need time for the pigments to settle into the brow leaves of the paper and do the thing. So next I have this forest green. Do the same thing, just add a little bit to my palette. Give it a good mix. And it's very opaque. Starting out very opaque. Almost like gouache. Wonder when it goes up over that line how much well it's going to it's going to be diluted it's not going to cover it so much it's okay i think i should have added a bit more water there but so lovely i like it as far as I can see, it's it's so it's very very opaque in mass tone. Hmm. So now I'm going to mix the forest blue. See what this does. That looks really opaque as well in my palette. And there you can see my sizing again of the paper. It's a little bit off. Uh-huh. Well. This is a really opaque colour as well. It's nice though. It's, it's a nice dark dark blue, blue green, I meant to say. Just bring that out. It's almost grey. It's almost like, did I just bump the phone? Sorry. It's, it's almost grey. Okay. I heard Baloo stir, so I 
had to quickly check that he's okay. Wow, though, that granulation is coming in quick. Wow. So far, I like this one the best. Um, but I am ahead of myself as per usual. I have to wait until it dries. Do not rush. The next one is this. Oh, emergency, emergency. Okay. Oof, that was close. Give that, giving my brush a really good wash here. Before I continue. As to not contaminate the colours. So, my next one is this forest brown. Some in there and see what happens. Now I'm giving it a good, really, really good mix. I think it's important to really mix your granulating colors before you apply them because there's, um, there's different weights of, there's different pigments and they have different weights and they will, if you don't mix them well, the heavy ones will settle to the bottom and the lighter ones to the top and, you know, you might not get the effect you were hoping for. That is not as opaque as the other ones. coming in a little bit more translucent let's just lighten that It's nice. It reminds me. What does it remind me of? It reminds me a little bit of a Daniel Smith green. Is it undersea green that it reminds me of? I'm not really sure. Okay. It's, I am digressing. Next, and the last one, is this forest grey. Oi. Oh, this is tough. A bit of paper to get get a better grip on, on that. Oh, okay. That has a lot of binder on top. Just giving it a good, good mix there. Really need, you need to wash those off after I finish the video, the tops of the tubes because they will stick and it will be very difficult to get the caps off afterwards. Now, giving it a really good mix. That looks very opaque as well. Wow, that is very opaque. Very dull. It's a very, very dull green, but it's called um, forest grey, so <laughs> I shouldn't be so um, surprised. Um, 
and I kind of went a little bit too far with that, but that's fine. Now, the verdict. I'm going to have to let them dry though, so I'm going to pause here, take a sip of my chamomile tea, go and get the right pen <laughs> and bring it over for the next bit of the video and I'll see you in a second. So they have dried, well mostly, this one I think because it had a lot of binder in it, I think that might take a, quite a while to dry. Um, Again, my fault, I should have mixed the paints before I put them on the palette, but um, moving on. Um, they, they, they're almost dry. I'd say, I mean, they, they're dry to the touch. Yeah, just this little bit here is still wet. When I decided to do a swatch video of these, I did a bit of pigment sleuthing. So I wrote down the numbers underneath, the pigment numbers of each color used to create these, um, these hues of green. And then I went looking for what colors they were. Now some I did know, like PG18, I did know it was Viridian. PBR7, I knew that it was an iron oxide. PY43, I wasn't very familiar with. Turns out it was a Moroccan yellow ochre. Um, the forest, so that's the forest olive. The forest green was PG19, which again, I was like, okay, I don't, not sure I know that. That is cobalt green pale. PB33 is uh, another zinc iron oxide. Forest Blue is PB36, which is a um, cobalt chromite blue. And PBK11 is a um, black iron oxide. Forest Brown, PG26 is a cobalt chromite green spinel. I think that's how you pronounce it with a PBR7 and a PY43, a bit similar to the first one, but with the, um, the green being different. And the forest gray is a PBR7, PG50, which is cobalt titanite green, and PBK, which is a um, black iron oxide. Now, for you who use Daniel Smith colors, you may know the PBK11. That's how I know it. I'm sure that other brands have P PBK11, so, but I'm referring to the Daniel Smith one because that's the one I know. It's Luna Black. And for me, I in, in my mind, Luna Black is highly granulating. In fact, almost all the colors, I, I would say all the colors used are highly granulating. There's cobalt, there's iron oxides, there's viridian. Um, it's interesting that, if I'm correct, and please um, feel free to correct me if I am wrong, each color does have an iron oxide in it, um, which is an earth color, and well, iron oxides come in many pigments, um, but earth colors tend to be granulating. So from what I can deduce, <laughs> God, I, I'm sorry. It sounds like I'm a pigment detective here. Um, basically what Schmincke did was use, um, granulating colors, heavily granulating colors together to create these colors. And I'm assuming they did the same with the other range of um, super granulation colors, which I haven't tried. There's some that I'm really interested in trying, um, like the Volcano set and the Haze set, I think. Um, I think those are the two that I would like to try. Now, these are beautiful. They're, they're beautiful greens, and I'm sure they would suit really um, artists that do landscapes and 
use watercolour in a very fluid manner, in a very a spontaneous manner, because they can create some beautiful effects. For me, I, I'm not sure. I mean, this one I would love, I, I will use, I will use more. I'm, I, perhaps I have used it a little bit in the past, now that I'm looking at it. The other ones, I'm not really sure, because I work on small surfaces, um, kind of like my watercolors to be a little predictable when because i would like to work more loosely in watercolors and not just in my um, pen and watercolor method that i use i i would introduce these as i would also try the uh, volcano range the volcano set sorry not range and the haze set, which I have my eye on. I think they have an ocean one, a uh, sea-themed um, one, which, again, I would be interested in trying. Okay, so, yeah, they are very, very beautiful. I'm, I, I cannot um, deny that, that they are really, really beautiful. For me, I'm not really sure. However, I might be completely wrong <laughs> and you might see them popping up in my work. Next on our list today of tiny um, reviews is my review of, no, yeah, this is the right pen. I brought it over when my paints were drying. The Sarasa Nano 0.3. I usually use my Micron pens, my Pigma Micron. I use mostly my 003, but on um, cold press paper, I use my 005 because the nib on the 003 really um, does not last very long on textured paper. And I wanted to try different pens because I paint, uh, sorry, I draw a lot with pens. So I thought I'd try the Sarasa Nano 0.3. It is, the description says that it is light fast, that it is, it is water resistant. It's a, you know, it's a very light pen. It's a plastic pen. It's got like a rubber grip here. Um, if you can see that it has this, turn it sideways to do that has this little clip which is really handy if you want to clip it onto your journal but I tried it last night I gave it a go last night and I wanted to show you when I what I did to take it for a test run I just I just drew for like half an hour little houses nothing special but I wanted to see how it performs it's really light to um, to use the and this paper is quite smooth it is the um, the art creation talons yeah it is not an expensive sketchbook it is a um, budget sketchbook that I use to um, draw out ideas. I, d I do not use it for um, finished finished work. Um, so I tried the Zebra Sarasa Nano. It was okay. It didn't flow as well as I had hoped. And by the end of of the little sketching session, which was half an hour, a bit over half an hour, my wrist hurt because I was applying too much pressure to get the the, um, the ink out of the pen. Um, so my little review is no, this is not going to replace my Pigma Micron. <laughs> um, I think I was expecting a little 
bit more of it than I should have because I think these are usually used for journaling and such and I expected that I would be able to draw like I would draw with my art pen. I will use it for journaling, I will use it for writing. I love the colour of it. This is called, um, I think it's grey brown, I believe. It's a beautiful, like, muted brown. I'll just compare this to my other, my Micron 005, for instance. Um, what should I do? I'll just do add circles. See, it's very similar in colour. So this is richer. This flows so well. And this one. It has it has a scratchiness to it. Full disclosure, I did try it on different papers as well, not just this. I wanted to try on cold pressed, hot pressed, I did on various little tests on papers. I just didn't find it um, good enough to warrant me replacing this, which is a shame because these pens come in also metal barrels and, you, and that's why I wanted to try it. Um, so I could just change the ink inside and just use the metal barrel over and over again um, but no it didn't it didn't do it for me I'm afraid but that is not to say it's not a good pen and you you know you can write with with it and maybe even do small sketches with it or if you have really strong wrists it might work for you I'm sure that I know that some people love it and I'm sure that it, it will find its purpose um, in my studio. I think it's going to be mostly for writing with. Anyhow, um, that was my spontaneously <laughs> um, created um, video today because as I said I had um, something completely different planned out but the postal sprites are at it again and especially now it's Christmas, everything's going to be a bit delayed. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video nonetheless. Um, I hope next time I will have my new paints to show you because I'm really excited about them. And I hope you will be here with me to, to just sit with me and swatch and just hang out. Thank you. Thank you, thank you again so much for being here. Um, I am eternally grateful to you all for just, for your presence, for being here and um, for subscribing, for commenting, for liking, for everything. Now my little, <laughs> this is so awkward. Every time I do this, I think I'm gonna do it a little bit better, but I never do it better. Okay, so. If you like this video, please like. If you would like to see more of my videos, uh, I promise I'm trying to get better with every video. I'm not sure if I'm achieving it, but I am trying. Um, if you would like to see more videos, please um, subscribe. Hit the notification button so that you know that I have uploaded a video. And um, also leave a comment. Tell me what you think. You might love this pen. Please please share your uh, views on it. And also the Schmincke Horridum super granulation colors. Do you have any, um, you know, suggestions on what I should try from them? What would you think I would like? Uh, do you have any kind of comments on these colors? I would love to hear, would love to hear from you, period. <laughs> Thank you again and I hope to see you all very, very soon. Take care, stay creative and keep going onwards. We got this.
Bye. Bye. Bye.